Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. This video is all about 3D object scanning and detection with ARK2. And we're going to explore how to scan 3D objects, how to use these scans in Xcode, and of course, how to detect and work with 3D objects in your app. And if you're looking for some more basic videos on ARKit and SceneKit, you can check out the video descriptions below. I have linked some pretty useful tutorials there. So in this year's WWDC keynote, LEGO demoed what's possible with ARKit and 3D object detection. Once you have found an object, they showed a whole simulated world built around a real object. We are focusing on the basics today so that you will be ready to build amazing augmented reality experiences. And we want to detect this flower and in order to be able to detect a three-dimensional object, we need to perform a detailed scan of this object. Apple has released a great sample app called ARKit Scanner. You can download the project files from Apple's developer websites and install it on your ARKit capable device. The more power your device has, the better the scan results are going to be. So once you have installed the app on your iPhone or iPad, just go ahead and scan your object on a well-lit and empty tabletop to get the best results. Just follow the directions in the app and once you're finished, you can save an AR object file to your iCloud Drive, Dropbox or whatever you want. So if you have the file on your computer, we are ready to move along and launch Xcode. I have already created a very basic project. It is based on the AR kit template using SceneKit as a content technology. And what I did was removing all of the sample scene files, replacing it with a game scene, very simple. And I have also added a product info sprite kit scene. Now you might be asking why should I use a sprite kit scene with scene kit? But if we have a look at the app that we try to create, we have this hovering plane above our flower. And this is actually the goal of our application. We detect the flower and we place some information about this flower right above it. This could be a flower shop. You could use it for different other applications, uh, for a museum, for everything that is related to displaying information about an object that you've already scanned. So this is the goal of our app. We have our flower and we have this plane above our flower that can also be tracked. The flower can be tracked and our plane is going to move right along with it. And to work with this plane and some text, what I did was just adding such a sprite kit scene. And there is just an SK sprite node for the image as a texture. I've of course added this image to my assets folder. And I've also added two of these SK label nodes. So very basic stuff, nothing fancy. And we can therefore focus now on implementing all of the interesting stuff related to a ARKit and also related to the scan that we performed. So I hope you have already used the ARKit scanner and transferred the AR object file to your computer because what we try to do now is importing this to Xcode. And in my assets folder, this is the place where I also add my AR objects that I would like to detect in my application. So I right click right here and I want to create a new AR resource group. And I'm going to call this resource group maybe flower object. So just click once flower objects and I could place a ton of different flowers that I've scanned into my flower objects AR resource group. And here I just drag and drop the file that I've created with the AR kit scanner application from Apple. I have transferred that to my computer and I'm now drag and drop this just into this AR resource group flower objects. And there is even this tiny little preview of my scan. So pretty cool stuff, this AR kit scanner tool and very handy to scan your own 3D objects and work with them right here. So opening up now our view controller, we need to configure 
our AR world tracking configuration a little bit different than usual. So if you remember, we are using View Will Appear to create an AR world tracking configuration for a standard AR kit session. But the difference now is that we have to add some object detection capabilities to our configuration and this couldn't be simpler. So I'm just using my configuration object that I already have. And this object has a property called detection objects. We've already worked with the detection images in the last tutorial on ARKit, but now we're going to focus on these detection objects. And to load some objects into this property, all we need to do is use AR reference object and then access reference objects in group named in a bundle. And the group that we are using is the flower objects AR resources group that we've just created in our assets folder. And this is located in our main bundle. And since I'm pretty sure that I spelled everything correctly, I'm just adding an exclamation mark here to unwrap this. And this is actually all there is to our configuration, nothing more. And now the interesting part is going to happen in our ARSCN view delegate because here we are using node for anchor, a very cool delegate function that is always called when a new anchor is created and we need to return an SCN node that is going to be attached to this anchor. And the anchor is created once we detect our 3D object, our flower pot. And what we need to do there is to configure a node that looks as the node that we would like to see. And this would be also the place where you could create a whole game world or initialize the creation of this game world based on the location of your anchor. So what we're going to do now is just first of all, create an empty node object, just initialize that with SCN node, and then also return this node so that we do not get an error here because we need to return an SCN node in this function. And now what we want to do is to check if we can get such an object, such an AR object anchor. And therefore we're using an if let statement, calling this object object anchor. And what we try to do is to use the anchor that we receive as a parameter and then cast that to an AR object anchor. And this AR object anchor contains a transform information and also the reference object that we are interested in. And we can use this reference object to, for example, define the size of our plane. So let's create a plane object with SCN plane. This is what we're going to use to display our text and initialize it with a width and a height. And what we could do now is to just use the width and height of the detected object. We can do that with the object anchor, its reference object and its extent and its X coordinate for the width and the same thing, object anchor, reference extent, a uh, reference object, extent and Y for the width. Since it's required to use CG floats here, I'm just casting that real quickly both of them CG float. And I do not want to have a plane in the size of my detected object. So I'm going to just use a fraction of that. So I just want to have, let's say about 80% of the width and let's say 50% of the height. So I'm just multiplying that with 0.8 and 0.5. With that, we've defined a plane. Now we're going to make this look a little cooler by adding a corner radius. So corner radius. And for this corner radius, I'm going to use the plane and its width divided by eight to get a corner radius that just feels nice. And now after we have prepared our plane, the interesting part follows where we integrate our sprite kit scene with scene kit. So what we need to do is first of all, create a sprite kit scene object and I can now just use SK scene and initialize that with a file named. And here I'm using my product info file and this is just the file name of 
my sprite kit scene, just added that right here. And with that, it is prepared for us to use in SceneKit or here for our SCN node that we tried to return in this function. And to assign now my sprite kit scene to my plane, all I need to do is use my plane, access its material and the diffuse property, and then set its contents property. And here I simply assign my sprite kit scene. Since we can look at our scene from different sides, what I'd also like to do is use my plane, first material, and then select the is double-sided property and set this to true so that we can have a look at our plane from every side. And now the last thing that we need to configure for our plane is the transform since there is a difference in our sprite kit scene and in our AR scene. And therefore I'm again using the plane, the first material, the diffuse and its contents transform. And what I actually want to do is flip this vertically, flip the whole um, sprite kit scene vertically. And therefore I have to um, create an SCN matrix for and make a scale. And what I like to do is do nothing in X direction, but negative one for Y direction, just to flip it vertically. And I have to place now this scale matrix into a translate matrix. So SCN matrix, a matrix for translate. And here I just have to specify that I also want to translate this along the y axis. So therefore I'm setting x to zero, z to zero, and just y to one. And with that, we have our sprite kit scene ready. Now we actually just have a geometry for the plane that we want to create. So we still need a node, therefore I'm creating a plane node with SCN node, and then we can just initialize that with our geometry that we just created, which is plane. Now, we now have a plane, but it is actually positioned just somewhere. And we need to give it the position of our detected object, and we actually want it to hover above our detected object. And therefore, we're again going to use our object anchor to get the center coordinate of our reference object. So let's access the plane node because this is what we are moving in our augmented reality scene and access the position. And here we just need to make an SCN vector three and I'm going to use the make and for X, we're going to use the object anchor and the reference object, its center and its X position for the Y coordinate we're going to use, of course, the Y coordinate of the center of our reference object, but we're going to add 35 centimeters to let it hover or to let our plane hover about above our uh, detected object. And here for the Z coordinate, we're of course just using Z. And then we can use the node that we've created earlier and just add our child node, which is the plane node. Well, actually, that's it. And if you run this now in the simulator, what you will get is as soon as your object, in this case, our flower pot has been detected, our plane is going to be added right above it. And we have our cool text, our cool plane with the corner radius right above it. You could create this or design this a lot better than I did. So I hope you have enjoyed seeing how simple it is actually to detect 3D objects after you've scanned them. I'm sure that you will come up with great ideas to enhance user experiences with augmented reality. I think it's pretty cool. And I thank you so much for watching. If you do not want to miss any future tutorials, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.